You studied for weeks, you know the material inside and out, but then the exam throws a question at you that feels like it's in another language. Is it a trick? Are they trying to confuse you? Or is it something else that's going on here? Today, we're breaking down exactly how these trick questions work. And once you understand, you'll see they're not trying to trip you up at all. They're testing something deeper. And one reason might actually shock you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandon, also known as the Sterile Guy. On this channel, I help sterile processing techs crush their exams and thrive in their sterile processing careers. If that's your goal, hit subscribe so you don't miss a future video. And if you're feeling generous, give your boy a video like. I do believe I am your go-to SPD guy. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's explain what trick questions really are. Here's the first thing you need to know. There are no real trick questions. The CRCST exam isn't designed to fool you. It's designed to test your understanding. The problem is that the way the questions are written can feel really awkward at times. After so many versions of this exam and constant fine tuning by HSPA and their many SPD tech question writing committees, they can only ask the same concepts in so many ways. That means you'll sometimes see questions written in unusual or clunky ways. It's not to confuse you. It's just the reality of rewording the same tested material over and over again. So why do some questions feel awkward? Here's another layer most people don't know. Some of the most confusing questions you'll see are actually pre-test questions. These are brand new concept questions that are being tested for future exams. They don't even count towards your score. HSPA includes them to gather statistics and data to see if candidates interpret them correctly or if they need to be thrown out altogether. So if you stumble on something that feels like it maybe doesn't belong, it might possibly be one of those pretest questions. The key is don't panic, flag the question and come back later. You may find another question down the line that helps provide an answer to this clunky question. However, never assume it is a pretest question and just skip over it. It could just be a clunky adopted question that sucks. Let's talk common wording pitfalls, double negatives. For example, which of the following is not unacceptable for use in decontamination? What did that just ask me? If you rush through a question like this, you'll completely misread it. So basically it is asking what is acceptable. I hate double negative questions, absolute words. When you see always or never in the answer choices, those are rarely correct because healthcare is full of exceptions. Unless it is something blatantly clear like never shut one of your coworkers into a sterilizer chamber to scare them. That's never happened. <clears throat> Initiation. And then there's the classic, which of the following is not or all of the following except. Pay attention to those important chosen words. It's helpful when they are all capitalized to draw attention to them but they aren't always that easy. Here's the catch. Those aren't really trick questions. They're designed to make sure you read all the answers. When you get a not or accept question, you can't just skim for the right answer. You have to actually think through each choice. That's the exam's way of checking that you truly understand the sterile processing concept, not just the flashcard version. Here's an example. It's one thing to answer a definition, and another to understand how that definition applies in real time. Here's a flashcard that has the term lumen and the definition being interior path through a needle, tube, or surgical instrument. You can study this flashcard over and over and know the definition by heart. But what if you're asked a question like, which item is appropriate for an ultrasonic irrigator? A, bone ronger, B, acetabular reamer, C, cannulated tibial reamer, or D, bone hook. You might know that lumen definition inside and out, but if you don't truly understand what it means, this answer of C, having the word cannulated, might go right over your head. Cannulated being another term defining a lumen. Questions want to make sure you truly understand the concepts and not just the memorized definition. This is a good time to re-emphasize that practice exams and flashcards are not the end-all be-all for prepping for certification. They are tools. 
They are tools to assist you in better understanding where you are doing well and where you need deeper study. If you rely solely on practice exams or flashcards and fail because you never read the HSPA manual, that's on you. I have had many techs tell me they failed because of my exams. And when I dug deeper asking them more questions, they either didn't put any effort towards studying or didn't even own the HSPA manual. That's a no-go. I'm going to link the HSPA manual in the description below. If you're prepping for certification, you better go buy it now if you don't have it. Now let's talk about instrument and process confusion. Some questions also trip people up by focusing on instruments or processes that sound almost identical. For example, Mayo scissors versus Metzenbaum scissors. They're both scissors, but their uses are totally different. If you only memorize the name without understanding the function, you'll pick the wrong one. Same thing with processes. They might shuffle the steps. For example, when should lubrication be applied in relation to inspection? If you visualize the actual SPD workflow you've practiced, you'll know the answer. That's why memorizing isn't enough. You have to mentally walk through the real job. Now let's talk strategies to beat these trick questions. Slow down and underline keywords in your head. Not, always, never, except. Look out for those. Eliminate obviously wrong answers before you choose. Okay, so B and D are definitely not correct. Now you just focus on A and C without the excess noise. And if you choose to flag this question for later, write down the question number and add the two possible answers of A and C next to it so you're prepped when you come back around to it. The Prometric Testing Center usually gives you a pencil and a piece of scratch paper to be able to write that down. Don't second guess yourself into failure. If you studied well, your first instinct is usually right. I don't know how many times I changed an answer last second and was wrong. The only reason you should change an answer is if your memory truly does come back to you or you found the answer through another question on the test. And lastly, remember, if you run into a bizarre, badly written question, just breathe and know it is not on purpose to trip you up. It's just humans trying their best to design questions off a limited amount of content. So here's the big takeaway. There are no trick questions. There are only questions that test whether you truly understand sterile processing concepts, the why and the how, and not just the memorized flashcard steps. This is the reason I created the Sterile Processing 101 Certification Prep Course. With this course, it isn't simply memorizing or taking practice tests, although it is packed with those too. It is true learning about the concepts and the whys behind it. You should check the course out. I have provided a test drive where you can access a lesson in the course for free to see how it works. I'll link that down below. If you found this breakdown helpful, hit like so more future SPD techs can find this video. And if you want to practice handling real exam style questions, I've got free practice test resources linked below that walk you through some of the exact same test questions we talked about today. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brandon, the Sterile Guy, and I'll catch you in the next video.